It is time for our picks against the spread. We are looking at five of the biggest games in college football week nine with Brad Crawford and Chris Hummer. But before we get into the picks, guys, let's take a look at your season records because you guys have been riding hot streaks all season long. Brad, 52 and 20 straight up, 44, 25 and one against the spread. Chris, 48 and 24 straight up, 42, 27 and one against the spread. Both of you guys are winning over 60% of your picks. So basically what I'm seeing here is you need to quit sports writing and become professional gamblers. And I'm just going to tell you guys and we're all be going to become rich. Um, but Chris, if, if we're turning this into a little competition here, what's the strategy this week? How are you going to overcome Brad? I might have to steal his homework or something, man. Like, I feel like I'm doing well this season and I'm just still getting lapped. Um, so I guess you just got to try a little harder, you know? You got to put in that effort. You got to get all the way to the line, finish out those runs, and uh, we'll see what happens. All right. I believe in you. Okay, let's start in Ann Arbor, guys, for a cross-state rivalry game. Michigan opened as a 21-point favorite. That number has since climbed to 22-and-a-half. The Spartans 2-0 against Big Blue under head coach Mel Tucker. Both times they were the underdog, although that 2020 game didn't have the big crowd at the big house. Chris, how's this one playing out? I've got Michigan winning and covering. I think Michigan is a much, much better team this year. And beyond that, Michigan's a motivated team. We all know how this game went last season. Michigan probably should have won that game. It was the better team at the time. I think at home in the big house with the entire crowd behind them, Michigan's going to roll this week. J.J. McCarthy's going to have a huge game. Michigan State secondary is problematic this year. I don't see Michigan State moving the ball against Michigan either. I think this is a blowout. So after hearing Chris's take, I'm starting to feel a little bit better about my Michigan pick here. This is the most difficult pick of the week for me because of the whole rivalry narrative, throw records out the window, how teams are playing coming in. Michigan State has won back-to-back -back games in this series, but this is a completely different Spartans team without much horsepower in the backfield compared to last season. That's going to be a crazy environment in Ann Arbor Saturday night, rare night game for Michigan, and Blake Corum should have his way against that Michigan State front seven. So I'll lay the 22 and a half points here and side with Chris taking the Wolverines in this spot. All right, Texas A&M doing some soul searching. The Aggies have lost three straight games for the first time under Jimbo Fisher. Ole Miss probably feeling a little deflated as well after its first loss of the season to LSU. The Rebs a two and a half point favorite in College Station. Brad, who are you taking here? I did not think getting to a bowl game this season would be in serious jeopardy for A&M at this point, but here we are. You know, the Aggies have lost three straight, as you mentioned. No one's picking Jimbo Fisher's team to win this game. And my eyes tell me Ole Miss is a better team, really on both sides of the ball right now. But just hold that thought. Road environments are a different animal in the SEC. This one's at night, Kyle Field. The Aggies spotted South Carolina 17 points in the first five minutes of the game last weekend. I don't see that happening again. I'll take A&M here and the points at Kyle Field. And the Aggies went out right and beat Ole Miss. Brad, I think you made my argument for me earlier when you said you think Ole Miss is the better team on both sides of the ball. I will take the better team on both sides of the ball. Um, the Aggies' run defense has been a disaster this year. They were 102nd nationally in terms of yards allowed per carry. And that's a problem against Ole Miss, an offense built on the run. I think Quinshawn Judkins and Zach Evans have a huge game against Texas A&M. I don't see Texas A&M manufacturing a ton of points against a sneaky good Ole Miss defense. And frankly, the vibes just aren't good right now in College Station. Um, the Aggies are dealing with some suspensions. They've lost three straight. I don't think the A&M crowd is going to be as into it as they usually are. I, I really like Ole Miss here. I think they're the better team and I think they cover. The vibes are not good at all. If Texas A&M loses, that would be a four game losing streak. That hasn't happened since 2005. I don't want to know what Midnight Yell or the message boards will look like after that. So best of luck to all them down there. All right, an interesting one here. Notre Dame at number 16 Syracuse. The look ahead line favored the Irish by a point on the road. But after Syracuse nearly upset Clemson, the Orangemen now favored by three at home. Chris, what are you picking here? I really wish I could have got Syracuse as the underdog by one, but I still like Syracuse to cover here. I think they're just the better team. I came away very impressed by the Orange last week against Clemson, and I don't think Notre Dame's strengths position themselves in a way to win this game. Um, Syracuse is a run-first offense, obviously with Sean Tucker and Garrett Schrader is also great with his legs. Notre Dame's a middle-of-the-pack defense in terms of defending the run. I don't Notre, I'm sorry, Syracuse also has an excellent secondary. Drew Pine has struggled at times this year. 
I don't think Notre Dame's going to score enough points to win this game, and I like Syracuse to continue their momentum at home. My biggest question here is, will Syracuse be able to pick itself off the mat inside the Carrier Dome after that loss to Clemson? That was disheartening, right? Syracuse was top 20 team, lost his first game of the season. I think most of the public money here is going to be on Syracuse to win at home, so I'll go on the other side, take the Irish. Notre Dame's already won one road game this season that it probably shouldn't have against UNC as a road underdog. Marcus Freeman pulls the 5-3 and three with another win on Saturday in New York. Notre Dame covers and wins outright. It does seem like Marcus Freedom, Freeman is able to get his guys up for the big games. All right, huge implications in the Big Ten East with this one. Number two, Ohio State at 13th ranked Penn State. Home, an, home advantage is real for the Nittany Lions. They're 4-0 this season, coming off that whiteout win to Minnesota. But here come the Buckeyes, favored by 15 and a half with a 7-1 and record against James Franklin. Brad, how do you see this one shaking out? I have to admit, I was holding my breath in the first half of last week's game against Iowa because I picked Ohio State to cover that huge 29 and a half point spread. Buckeyes wound up doing it because I realized at some point that Iowa defense had to tire out, and it did. I'm expecting more of the same Saturday against Penn State. This one kicking off at noon, by the way, really helps the Buckeyes in what would have been a tough road environment. Conditions right now just aren't right for Penn State to win this game, and I think Ryan Day's team will find an early rhythm and win by at least 20 points. We're going to be opposite on a lot of picks this week, Brad. I like Penn State to cover here. Um, I think the last six, game in, six games in the series have been decided by 14 points or less. They have all been close. James Franklin gets his team ready to play against Ohio State. And the games in Happy Valley especially have been particularly close in the series. I do think Ohio State's a much better team. I trust that offense a lot more. But I do wonder how Ohio State's going to handle a game in which they're going to have to run the ball to win. Like, you have to do that against Penn State's defense. The strength of Penn State's defense is its secondary. There is a weakness up front for Penn State. And Ohio State hasn't really shown consistently that it can run the football like that this year. I think Sean Clifford's a little underrated. Obviously, I think Ohio State's the better team. I'm picking Ohio State to win this game. But I think Penn State does just enough to keep it close. I have to say, Brad, I was sweating that Iowa-Ohio State game, too. I was on the wrong side of that one. You know that. But I've learned my lesson. Ohio State's one of the best teams against the spread uh, and historically against numbers of this size. Okay, now it's time for the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. Although Vegas doesn't expect it to be much of a party for the Gators against top-ranked Georgia, the Dogs favored by 22 and a half in Jacksonville, the biggest spread on record in this series, and a strength versus strength matchup here. Florida's 6.4 yards per rush, the best in the FBS. Well, Georgia's holding opponents to 3.3 yards per carry. That ranks in the top 20 for defensive units. Brad, part of the reason for the Gators' success on the ground, Anthony Richardson, who you think will have a bounce back game here. Yeah, this line really jumped out to me, and apparently AR-15 thought the same thing. I mean, is Georgia really three touchdowns better than Florida at this point in the season based on what we've seen from the Bulldogs? Georgia's 4-3 and three against the spread this year. I feel like this is a potential look-ahead spot for the Bulldogs with Tennessee looming coming in next week in Athens. Possible one versus two matchup there. I'm not taking the Gators to win straight up, but I think all eyes will be glued to this game late in the fourth quarter. I'm expecting a competitive finish, and I'll take Florida and 22.5 points. Yeah, my first thought was to go with Brad on this one. I really thought I was going to pick Florida to cover. But when you look at the history of this game, like they're not that close usually. Four of the last seven games in this series have been decided by more than 22 points. And right now, I think Georgia is a much, much better team than Florida. Obviously, Florida can manufacture points when Anthony Richardson is playing well. But that is a bit of an inconsistency for Florida as well. He tends to turn the ball over quite a bit. And that's something you can't do against Georgia. Florida's defense is a bit of a mess right now. I think Georgia's going to have no problem scoring in this game. And while I think it will be close for a little bit, Georgia pulls away late thanks to maybe a couple of uh, Florida turnovers at the wrong time. I like Georgia to win and cover here. All right, let's go to our best bets where we're looking for the best plays across the board. And Chris, start us off with Hummer's Hammer. Yeah, I think there's some really good value with Kentucky against Tennessee this week. I don't necessarily think Kentucky's going to win that game, although they could. Like, I think if you give Mark Stoops two weeks to prepare for anyone, they're going to be in good shape. But Kentucky has a couple things that really work in their favor. 
Um, Kentucky has a secondary that's among the best in the country. I think they are going to be able to limit some of what Tennessee does, not stop them, but slow them down enough. And also Tennessee's big weakness is its secondary and Kentucky with some skill pieces on the outside, plus a quarterback in Will Levis, um, who's one of the best in the country, is equipped to expose that. I think the line's at 12 and a half right now. I really like Kentucky to cover that. I think Kentucky's in great position to do so. And uh, I would take uh, Kentucky as my best bet of the week. All right, if the secondary actually slows down Tennessee's offense, like you're saying there will, there'll be a lot of teams watching that game. Okay, Brad, what's Brad's best bet? Yeah, I'm going outside of the top 25 this week, Grace. I'm going BYU minus three against East Carolina. During Mike Houston's tenure, ECU has one road win over a team that finishes with a winning record. That came last season against Marshall. The Pirates are a good team, not a great team. They're sort of unpredictable week to week as I've kind of watched ECU football these last few years. This is a great spot for BYU with ECU coming off its biggest win of the year against UCF. One of my buddies calls this the curse of the Pirates. You know, how does ECU handle the praise out in Provo, Utah and beat a team that's struggling right now? I don't think they can. Give me BYU minus three as my Brad's best bet. Okay, I will say ECU was a great situational spot last week. I almost bet on the upset, but kind of chickened out. So very intriguing stuff there. All right, Brad and Kit, Chris, thank you for your picks. Let's keep the winning ways going this weekend. And for all your college football coverage, stay tuned to the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel.